When Elat Mazar realized she discovered an ancient structure near Jerusalem, she turned to the Bible to help explain what she found. The story of King David's palace is one that has captivated archaeologists and historians for centuries. Deep beneath the bustling streets of Jerusalem, a team of dedicated researchers led by the brilliant and determined Ayat Mazar unearthed a massive stone structure that she believed to be the legendary palace of the biblical king. Her discovery, however, was met with both excitement and skepticism, igniting a fierce debate that continues to this day. This is the story of how, after the tragic passing of Eilat Mazar, her own cousin, Amihai Mazar, turned to the power of quantum AI to uncover the stunning truth about the Palace of David, Mazar's Holy Grail. In the heart of the ancient city of David, where history breathes from every stone, archaeologist Eilat Mazar embarked on a quest that would define her career. For years, she had been guided by a controversial method, using the Bible as a literal guide to uncover the secrets of the past. Many in the archaeological community scoffed at her approach, dismissing it as unscientific. But Mazar was undeterred. She was a woman of conviction, driven by a deep-seated belief that the stories of the Bible were more than just myths. They were a roadmap to a lost world. Her focus was on a specific passage in the second book of Samuel, which described King David going down from his palace to the fortress. This, she believed, was the key to locating the legendary palace. The topography of the area with the city of David situated on a narrow ridge suggested that the palace must have been located to the north on higher ground. It was a bold theory, one that went against the grain of conventional wisdom. But Mazar was not one to be swayed by popular opinion. She was a trailblazer, a woman who dared to challenge the established order. In 2005, after years of meticulous research and fundraising, Mazar began to dig. The world watched with a mixture of anticipation and skepticism. Was she on a fool's errand, chasing a ghost from the pages of a holy book? Or was she about to make a discovery that would rewrite history? The answer came sooner than anyone expected. Just a few feet beneath the surface, Mazar's team uncovered a massive stone structure, its walls up to 20 feet thick. The scale of the building was breathtaking, far larger than anything that had ever been found in the area. As the excavation continued, the evidence mounted. Pottery shards found within the structure dated back to the 10th century BCE, the time of King David. A bulla or clay seal impression bearing the name of a royal official mentioned in the book of Jeremiah was also unearthed. For Mazar, it was the smoking gun, the irrefutable proof that she had found what she was looking for. She announced to the world that she had discovered the palace of King David. The announcement sent shockwaves through the archaeological community. Some hailed it as a vindication of Mazar's methods, a triumph of faith and perseverance. Others were more cautious, arguing that the evidence was circumstantial, that the structure could have been a Jebusite fortress or some other public building. The debate raged on, a war of words fought in the pages of academic journals and at international conferences. Mazar, for her part, stood by her conclusions, her belief in her discovery unshaken. But the controversy took its toll. The constant criticism, the relentless questioning of her motives and her methods weighed heavily on her. The stress she confided in friends was taking years off my life. Yet she refused to back down. She continued to excavate, to publish her findings, to defend her legacy. The Palace of David was her life's work, the culmination of a dream that had been passed down through generations of her family. Then in 2021, the archaeological world was stunned by the news of Eilat Mazer's passing. She was gone, leaving behind a legacy that was as monumental and as controversial as the stone structure she had unearthed. The question of the Palace of David remained unanswered, a mystery that seemed destined to be debated for eternity. Or so it seemed. But what if a new kind of expert could settle the score? 
a new kind of dig. Among those who had followed the debate over the Palace of David with keen interest was Amahai Mazar, Ayalet's cousin and a renowned archaeologist in his own right. Amihai had always been more of a pragmatist than his cousin, less inclined to rely on the Bible as a literal guide. He had publicly expressed his doubts about Eilat's identification of the structure, suggesting that it was more likely a Jebusite fortress that had been conquered by David. But he had also acknowledged the significance of her find, calling it something of a miracle. With Eilat's passing, Amahai felt a renewed sense of responsibility to her legacy. He knew that the debate over the Palace of David would continue that her critics would use her absence to further their own agendas. He was determined to find a way to settle the matter once and for all, to bring clarity to the controversy that had surrounded his cousin's greatest discovery. But how? The traditional methods of archeology span had been exhausted. What was needed was a new approach, a way to see the past with fresh eyes. It was then that Amihai was approached by a shadowy figure from the world of high tech. The man who identified himself only as Prometheus was a representative of a secretive organization known as the Quantum Collective. He had heard of Amihai's dilemma and had a proposition for him. The Quantum Collective, he explained, had developed a revolutionary new technology, a quantum AI that was capable of processing vast amounts of data and seeing patterns that were invisible to the human eye. This AI, he claimed, could analyze the data from the Palace of David excavation and provide a definitive answer to the question of its origins. Amihai was skeptical. It sounded like something out of a science fiction novel. But Prometheus was persuasive. He showed Amihai a demonstration of the AI's capabilities, how it could reconstruct ancient cities from fragmented remains, how it could decipher lost languages. The AI, he explained, didn't just analyze the data, it experienced it. It could simulate the past, run through countless scenarios, and determine the most probable course of events. It was, he said, the closest thing to a time machine that had ever been invented. Amihai was intrigued. The idea of using such a powerful tool to solve the mystery of the Palace of David was tantalizing. It was a long shot, a gamble that could either vindicate his cousin or prove her wrong, but he knew that he had to try. He agreed to Prometheus's proposal and the data from the Palace of David excavation was uploaded to the Quantum AI's servers. The AI, which the Quantum Collective had named Oracle, began to process the data. It analyzed the architectural style of the building, the composition of the pottery, the inscriptions on the seals. It cross-referenced the data with every known archeological find from the period with every ancient text that had ever been written. For weeks, Amihai waited, his heart in his throat. The fate of his cousin's legacy, and perhaps a piece of history itself, was in the hands of a machine. Then one day, he received a message from Prometheus. Oracle had finished its analysis. The truth about the Palace of David was about to be revealed. The answer, however, was not what anyone expected, more than a palace. Amihai Mazar sat in a sterile white room, the only sound the faint hum of the servers that housed the oracle. On a large screen before him, a three-dimensional model of the large stone structure rotated slowly. He'd seen this model countless times, but now it was different. It was alive, glowing with layers of quantum data that were previously invisible to any human eye. The air was thick with anticipation. The moment of truth had arrived. The analysis began. Words and symbols streamed across the screen, a digital torrent of information processed with impossible speed. The first conclusion flashed in stark, undeniable text. Structure origin, not the palace of King David. Amihai's heart sank. A wave of disappointment washed over him. He had steeled himself for this, yet it felt like a heavy blow. Eilat, his brilliant and tenacious cousin, had been wrong. All those years of dedication of battling a skeptical world seemed to crumble in that single cold sentence. 
But before the weight of that conclusion could fully settle, the oracle continued its work. A new line of text appeared. Alternative hypothesis. Jebusite fortress. Probability negligible. Amihai looked up, his brow furrowed in confusion. If it wasn't David's palace and it wasn't a fortress, then what on earth had Eilat found? The mystery, which he thought was about to be solved, had just deepened. Then the screen flickered and the model of the structure began to transform. Walls dissolved and reformed. Rooms shifted their purpose. A new image emerged, one that was both familiar and utterly alien. You see, the Oracle had uncovered something that no one could have anticipated. The analysis revealed that the structure was not built by a king, but for a queen, or rather a high priestess of immense power. The data streams painted a stunning new picture of the past. According to the AI's analysis, the building was indeed constructed in the 10th century BCE, the very era of King David, but it was not his royal residence, Instead, it was the central temple of a powerful and widespread cult that worshipped a female deity, a goddess whose name and story had been systematically erased from history. Amihai stared, his mind reeling. A goddess cult in the heart of ancient Jerusalem? The very idea was preposterous, flying in the face of everything he and generations of scholars had ever known. But the evidence was overwhelming. The Oracle began pulling data from other archaeological sites across the region, highlighting connections that had been missed for centuries. It pointed to patterns in pottery shards, reinterpreted the meaning of female figurines, and deciphered ancient inscriptions that had long been misunderstood. The cult was powerful, with a vast following and a high priestess who was a figure of immense influence, a potential rival to King David himself. The implications were staggering, threatening to shatter the patriarchal narrative that had dominated the study of the past. And there was more. The AI wasn't finished. The model of the temple shifted again, revealing hidden chambers, secret passages, and celestial alignments. The Oracle had discovered that this was no mere religious site. It was a thriving center of scientific knowledge a place where ancient astronomers and mathematicians studied the stars and the secrets of the universe. It was an observatory, a library, and a university, all hidden within the walls of a sacred temple. Amihai was speechless. He had sought a simple answer, but instead he had uncovered a secret buried for 3,000 years. But this was just the beginning of the story, the guardians of the secret. The revelation of the goddess cult and the temple of knowledge sent shockwaves through the world. The academic community was in an uproar. Historians and archaeologists who had spent their careers studying the ancient world were forced to re-examine their most cherished beliefs. The media, of course, had a field day. Headlines screamed about the secret history of Jerusalem, the lost goddess of the Bible. Amihai Mazar found himself at the center of a storm. He was hailed as a hero by some, a heretic by others. He was invited to speak at conferences around the world to share the story of his incredible discovery. But he was also met with fierce resistance from those who refused to accept the new reality that the Oracle had revealed. The established order, it seemed, was not ready to give up its power without a fight. The Quantum Collective, for its part, remained in the shadows. Prometheus and his organization had no interest in fame or fortune. Their only goal was to uncover the truth, to use their technology to shed light on the darkest corners of the past. They had given Amihe the key to unlocking a secret that had been hidden for millennia, but it was up to him to decide what to do with it. For Amihai, the choice was clear. He knew that he had a responsibility to share the truth with the world, to honor his cousin's legacy by revealing the full story of the structure she had discovered. He began to work with a team of scholars to re-examine the evidence from the Palace of David excavation to find the clues that had been missed, the signs that had been misinterpreted. And as they looked, they began to see the pottery shards with the strange symbols, the figurines of the female deity, the inscriptions that had been dismissed as gibberish. It had all been there, hiding in plain sight. 
What other secrets are buried beneath our feet, waiting for a new kind of key to unlock them? Is this the future of archaeology, a partnership between human curiosity and artificial intelligence? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more mind-blowing stories from the past. Was the Oracle's discovery a lucky guess or a glimpse into a future where we can truly know our history?